Good morning, folks. How's it going? Mike coming back at you with yet another video on pre-calculus. In the previous video, we talked about exponential functions, uh, what those things look like, some of their properties, uh, how we can tell when our function is an exponential function if we're given a set of ordered pairs, uh, some properties of exponents, and a real life application of it. In this video, we are going to talk about uh, a related function to it, uh, referred to as the logarithmic function. So we said in the previous video that the exponential function b to the power x uh, was one to one, and therefore it has an inverse. So what is the inverse of the exponential function b to the power x? Well, as you probably guessed, it is the logarithmic function. Uh, the logarithmic function with base b is defined as f of x equals log base b of x, uh, where again, b is a positive number that's not equal to one, uh, and x is positive. For the exponential function, x could be any real number whatsoever, uh, but for the logarithmic function, uh, x is strictly positive. So as we said, uh, log base b of x is the inverse of b to the power x. Uh, and uh, you can pick any b value you want, substitute them into both, and you have the inverses. Uh, so the inverse of five to the power x would be log base five of x. Uh, log base 10 of x is the inverse of 10 raised to the power x. By, def or by composition of inverses, uh, I apologize. Uh, when you take the composition of a function with its inverse, you always get the identity function uh, or just x. So with these two particular functions, log base b of b to the x uh, equals x, and b raised <coughs> to the power log base b of x is equal to x as well. <coughs> By definition of the inverse, log base b of x equals y uh, implies that b raised to the power y is equal to x. Uh, and this is how we switch or convert between logarithmic and exponential form. Uh, the base of your log becomes the base of your exponent. And then these other two quantities here uh, on the uh, switch sides of the equal sign. Uh, so y uh, that was all by itself on the right now becomes the exponent on that base b. And then x here goes to the other side, the right hand side, uh, and is all on its own. Going the other way, the base becomes the base. And then these guys switch sides of the equal sign. So a couple samples here. Uh, convert four to the fourth equals 256, and three to the power two x equals 100. Uh, convert each of these guys into logarithmic form. So uh, four to the power four equals 256. Uh, this right here is your base. Uh, so this base is going to become the base of your log, as we see here. Uh, and then these other two quantities switch sides of the equal sign. Uh, the 256 uh, is going to be here inside of our uh, log. And then the 4 that was the exponent here is going to go on the right-hand side there. Now, the way that you read uh, logarithms uh, is... Uh, log base whatever of whatever quantity you have here. So this would be read as log base four of 256. Uh, some people sometimes read it as log of four to the power 256. That's not quite how that reads. Log base four of 256 is equal to four. The second one here, 3 to the power of 2x equals 100. Again, here's your base, here's your exponent, and here's your term all by itself on the right-hand side. The base becomes your base. The exponent 
goes by itself on the right hand side of your equality here and then the 100 that was by itself on the right hand side here goes inside of your logarithm. Now let's go the opposite way. Uh, let's take something in logarithmic form and let's uh, convert it uh, into uh, exponential form. If you read a logarithmic form and you said, hey, wait a second, shouldn't it be exponential form? Congratulations. You're paying attention. You're doing a very good job. So log base seven of 42 equals two X plus one. The base of your log becomes the base of your exponent. What was by itself on the right hand side, this entire quantity 2x plus 1, becomes the exponent of your base. And then the number that was inside of your logarithm, 42, uh, that goes on the right hand side. Our second one here, uh, log base 2 of 5x equals 12. Again, base becomes the base. What was inside of our logarithm goes on the right-hand side of the equal sign, and then what was on the right-hand side before becomes the exponent on our base. So 2 to the 12th equals 5x. Uh, some basic common values of the logarithm regardless of our base. Uh, log base b of b is equal to 1, uh, and log base b of 1 is equal to 0. Uh, you can check these uh, by converting to exponential form uh, and just realizing that, oh yeah, this makes sense. In exponential form, this first guy here is saying that b raised to the power 1 is equal to b, which we know is true. Any number raised to the first power is just itself. Uh, and this guy here is saying b raised to the power 0 is equal to 1, which we also know is true. Any number raised to the power 0 always gives us 1. Like the exponential function, we're going to go through some properties of the logarithmic function. Uh, number one, uh, the uh, domain of the logarithmic function is all positive uh, real numbers, and the range is all real numbers, uh, negative infinity uh, to positive infinity. Uh, now, before we continue on, recall from the previous video uh, that with our exponential function b to the power x, the domain was all real numbers and the range was all positive real numbers. So we see that the domain of the exponential equals the range of its inverse, uh, the logarithmic. And the range of the exponential uh, is equal to the domain uh, of the inverse uh, function. Uh, if you haven't done too much work with the general study of functions and their inverses, this is a general fact uh, that holds true for any function f and its inverse function uh, f inverse. Uh, the domain of f will equal the range of f inverse. Again, that's f, uh, reading it as f to the exponent of minus one. Uh, we don't actually want to think of it that way. We don't want to think of it as one over f. Uh, we just want to think of it as the inverse function. So the domain of f is equal to the range of f inverse. At the same time, the range of f equals the domain of 
F inverse. So these right here are two general facts uh, that are true for any function f and its inverse. Just something to keep in mind. Continuing on with our properties, uh, the logarithmic function has an x-intercept of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. 3. Uh, if b is greater than 1, then the logarithmic uh, function is increasing. We see in that red line here uh, in our uh, sketch of our graph here. If the base is between 0 and 1, then the, the logarithmic function is decreasing, uh, noted by the blue or gray uh, curve here. Uh, and 4, uh, as you can see from our uh, graphs here, uh, the logarithmic function does have a vertical asymptote. Uh, that vertical asymptote is the y-axis. Out of all of the logarithmic functions that we could use, uh, there are two that are the most commonly seen uh, and used uh, over the others. Uh, and even just between these two, one is far more commonly uh, used than the other one. One of the more commonly used, but not the most commonly used, uh, is known as the common logarithmic function. And it is defined as uh, log base 10 of x, or just log x. So if you don't see a base uh, given in your logarithmic function, uh, then you should assume that the base is 10. The other one, uh, this one is the most commonly used. Uh, it's called the natural logarithm or the natural logarithmic function. Uh, this guy is defined as uh, log base e of x uh, or ln x. More commonly, uh, by far, you'll see it written ln x and not log base e of x. Uh, that's just not really something that we do much of uh, anymore. LNX is shorter and nicer to uh, look at. Uh, later on in this chapter, uh, we will talk about how we solve equations uh, involving these uh, logarithms. We're going to talk about uh, the properties of logarithms and how we can use them uh, to expand or condense uh, logs. Uh, and then we're going to see some real life applications uh, of where logarithms can be used in the real world. So this concludes our video on the logarithmic function. Uh, it's the inverse of the exponential. Uh, we saw some properties of it, talked about some of the more common logs uh, that we use, uh, and talked about how to switch between exponential and logarithmic form. Guys, if you have any questions, please be sure to reach out to me, email, text, phone call, rock through the window, uh, magic wands sending up SOSs, whatever you have to do. Otherwise, until the next video, take it easy, guys.